Okay, we're now being joined by John Salter. Santiago, go ahead. Hi, John. Greetings from Amsterdam, and thank you for the time. How are you doing, and how are you experiencing this fight week at the Mohegan Sun thus far? Doing uh, really well. It's been going well. I appreciate it, and uh, glad to be here. John, you defeated the training partner of Gegard Musasi back in 2019, Costello Fanstinis. Do you think Musasi is extra fired up to beat you now that you have a win over his good friend and training partner? I assume that probably lit a fire under him some, uh, you know, and I, I try to look at those fights as completely separate, even though they train together because they're, you know, two different type fighters. But I'm sure that's something that uh, at least put me more on the radar. Who's going to be in your corner on fight night, John? Uh, I've got my head coach, Jeff Jimmo, and then uh, two training partners, uh, Chris uh, Barnheiser and Corey Crumpler. Good luck on fight night, sir. Thank you so much. Michael, go ahead. Hey, John. Hope you're doing well, man. We know what you can bring in terms of fighting style and fighting ability, but what does John Salter can bring to the middleweight division in terms of, you know, marketing and, and working all this uh, extra jobs outside of the uh, out of the cage uh, if you win or when you win the middleweight championship uh, I think the fact that I'm a finisher brings a lot of excitement uh, you know to fights because I like to get people out of there early and uh, then you know just uh, also you know to see a, a family guy be at the top I think is a big deal I think a lot of people get excited about that so John it's been a long road to the top here you're finally there you're fighting a legend like Gegard. Just tell us what this does for your legacy. Um, you know, yeah, it's, it's been a long road. I've been fighting for a long time. I've had a, you know, a lot of big fights, but it seems like, you know, I get a big fight, I win, and then, you know, I end up fighting a lower ranked person and uh, people kind of forget about me. So I think this is one to really cement uh, where I am in the world of MMA at 185. Gene, go ahead. Hi, John. So kind of along the same lines, is, is, has it kind of been a little bit frustrating, all the success that you've had, that it kind of took this long for you to get this kind of an opportunity? Um, you know, there's there's obviously days of frustration when you're, you know, uh, spending years working to get a title shot. It doesn't look like it's coming. But then again, you know, it's been a great experience. Bellator's treated me really well. So, um, you know, I think that it's God's timing, and I think this is what this is. It's the perfect time for me. And, um you know, I think it would have been great if it happened earlier, but I don't think there could be a better time for me than right now. I mean, has there been anything different that you've kind of done in training, knowing that this is the, the big shot that you've really obviously been waiting for for years? Uh, you know, I don't know that it's been a big difference. Obviously, the five rounds is different, you know, training for that. But the other thing is just it's such a unique opponent that's so hard to emulate that I've got to have so many guys that bring in, uh, you know, certain aspects of his game because, there's only one Gegar Masasi in the world, so you can't get a guy to come imitate him. You just got to have people that can, uh, you know, mimic one thing he does to get used to that. Dylan? Hey there, John. I appreciate you making some time. Absolutely. I'm just curious because as much as there's been some talk about, like, been putting in work for a while, it would be good to get the title shot sooner. But what I've been seeing on MMA Junkie, they put together a good piece just talking about how you're like second in promotional history behind Alexander Shlomenko for, you know, total bouts, just the amount of victories, the finishes, like as much as it would have been good to get the title shot sooner, like how cool is it to be, I guess, putting together stats like that and kind of being in that rarefied air at 185 in Bellator? Yeah, you know, I think that's, uh, that's exciting. And, and that's, that's what this is about, right? Getting out there, fighting, getting wins, and most importantly, getting finishes. So um, while... You know, like I said, while it didn't work out the way I was asking for at the time, it's been great um, every step of the way. And, uh, you know, this is just a blessing. It's like I said, this is God's timing. It's been on his time frame, not mine. And now we're in the top perfect spot. And just as a quick follow-up, I'm curious, like, what the level of fanfare in Gardendale, Alabama is looking like ahead of this one? Uh, I think I think we've got a lot of people uh, tuning in and, and coming up for the fight. i got a lot of people traveling to make it up. Uh, this week. So that's going to be great. Uh, can't wait to hear everybody out there in the crowd. Okay, Tony, go ahead. Hi, John. Hope, hope you're well. You, you mentioned earlier about being a, a family man. What would becoming the Bellator middleweight champion mean for you and your family? Um, you know, huge because my wife has, uh, 
just been there every step of the way, you know, and uh, such an encourager. And even right now, we've got a four and a half month old daughter. And uh, while she is the easiest baby uh, of anybody I've ever seen, you know, still there's so much goes into raising a young daughter. And for my wife to step in and take over the way she has during this training camp, it's just been unbelievable. And it's uh, made things so much easier for me. And, um, you know, so just that, just to paying off, not for me, not only for me, but for my wife, and then in the future, my daughter, uh, it's just huge. Thank you. Okay, that was the last one, John. Thank you for the time. Yeah, thank you, guys.